grazie. Thank you. It's very difficult to try to offer up some concluding remarks to such a complex debate. But we are having a number of different symposiums on the subject of the flagship initiative so that we can feed all of that into the midterm review and have some concrete elements for debate so that it's extremely important for us to do that and it's an extremely important exercise that we are doing today so that we can really take the pulse of the situation. The issue of poverty, and this was brought up in the workshops as well, is something that is really changing, changing along with the crisis. There were traditional categories that were excluded. And when the flagship initiative was drawn up, they really focused on those traditional areas of exclusion. But that area has widened to the working class. And in the crisis, there are a lot of sectors of small freelance autonomous work that are really on the edge and are quickly being sucked up into the um, into the area of poverty so there are full sectors where people are seeking work and where there is no work because there has been less public spending. So it seems that citizens feel that more people are at risk of entering a situation of poverty and 80% of citizens believe that poverty is on the rise in their country. And this is something that is really felt across the board throughout Europe. Now, I believe that it's extremely important to start with a principle. If our goal is to preserve the European Union, then we need to be able to find answers to these questions. And it's true, Madame Beres reminded us that in the treaties, these elements were not enshrined because they were left to the member states. But the citizens are looking to us for answers. That is clear. And this will be part of the debate as to how the European Union is going to uh, exist in the future, what it will look like. So there is the issue of unemployment, but there is also the issue of poverty and the fact that a number of our citizens are at risk of finding themselves in a situation of poverty for a short period of time or a longer period of time, and how long will that last? And therefore, they're looking to the European Union for uh, answers and hoping that the European Union will be able to address these issues united. Very recently, in Leuven, a speech was given on democracy, solidarity, and the European crisis. And Habermas said that if we want to preserve the monetary union, it's no longer sufficient, considering the structural imbalances between national econ econ economies, we will not be able to just lend money to single states and ask them to become more competitive on their own. Oh, no, we will need solidarity and a cooperative effort. So this is clear that the idea of economic growth is something that raises the question of what type of a model for the European Union. Initially, we had an idea of a welfare state that was functional. Yes, there were problems, but of course, it was the best system that existed, and it worked. It seemed to reduce imbalances. It did not widen them. But with the crisis, I think we are at risk of having this uh, perception that the European Union is, is impotent in, in uh, acting in this area. And it's true, I believe, that citizens feel disenfranchised from the European Union, and they will feel all the more so if we cannot bring forward answers 
solutions and state clearly that solidarity is a, is a value for the European Union and also for those who govern within the European Union. So it should be proposed as a, a model and not uh, just as, some, as, as something that we do not place value on. Then there is the issue as how, to, how structural uh, funds will be used in the future. There's tension here. There's criticism of the European Union. A lot of people are expecting much from the structural funds, nonetheless. And it was very rightly stated by the President Perez earlier that was that we need to try to use the funds so that, so that they're used in a, in a cross-cutting way, so that they have an effect on social aspects and also on innovation. We worked on this a lot, on this type of a subject uh, quite a bit, so we will need a lot of social innovation, a strong dose of that, better use our resources so that we can have an effect on new problems as they emerge. So there are some problems that are old, some that are new, and some that are changing, and we need to be able to have effect on all of those areas. Another thing that we need to address is creating work, creating economic growth, and also having an effect on dramatic social conditions on an increasingly large portion of the population. Now, at the same time, and here I'd like to give you a personal example from my region, it is true that green economy is not just something to, that can be used to create economic growth and future wealth and future jobs. It's also a way for us to have a concrete effect on the situation of families. It's no secret that food is extremely expensive for family, but right after that is uh, energy costs. It's an extremely important part of the family budget. And so the example that I wanted to give you is that we used European structural funds to revamp housing in various re parts of Piemont region. There's a lot of migration to my region now and took place in the 50s and 60s. So the houses that were built at that time for those workers and the low-cost housing quite, was, was quite old and so very energy inefficient with high fuel costs, therefore, to heat those houses. So we tried to revamp them, make them greener. And that drastically reduced the energy bills for the families that were living in those houses. And that also meant that we were able to increase the quality of life of those people that were living there. And it, it, it meant also that those families avoided falling into the uh, category, the, uh, the category of, of poverty. So here was a way in which we were able to also boost small companies, companies that are really at the risk of closing up shop. And so this really had a, a way of touching on a number of different issues. Now, local authorities, cities, and regions make up two-thirds of investment, of public investment. And European funds are fundamental in that. They're crucial. So this cross-cutting use of funds could be, have a leverage effect on many of the issues that we will have to deal with, like unemployment, poverty, climate change, fighting climate change, and relaunching European economy. Obviously, if we cannot find a way to start economic growth up again, it would be hard for us to, to deal with all of these other challenges. And local authorities are in charge of only one-third of uh, current expenditures. But a big part of that goes to social spending. And so 
They, they really feel the effects of, of all of these issues very clearly. And here I'd like to turn to our Member of Parliament because the Parliament is currently um, reviewing the issues of budget and budgetary issues that are obviously so important across the board. So it would be useful to have a more flexible use of funds, and that would mean that perhaps we could, to a certain extent, meet the needs that we have considering a reduction in funds as it stands. And then we can adapt to current situations. That will also be extremely important. So in managing future funds, we will need flexibility, simplification. Those are extremely important things uh, for us. Now, as I already stated, we believe that in local uh, regional authorities that we, we need to be listened because it's extremely in, uh, difficult to change things midway through. Therefore, we need to understand immediately what the regions and local authorities need. That's something that is of utmost important because the discussion on um, the budget will obviously have effects on us, and as of 2014, to be able to use those funds, I think that will be extremely important for us so as to be able to have an effect on some of the most urgent issues, including fighting poverty, which is one of the perhaps most important issues and, and urgent issues in